what's up and welcome to this video. So today's topic, I'm just gonna be talking about how to start a business with no money, um, little to no money, or even being extremely young, like a teenager, under 18, around 18, whatever it is. I'm just gonna talk about that today. And I'm gonna make this short and sweet. So it's kind of three things that I wanna cover with this. And then I'm also gonna give you my experiences because I started my business when I was 17 years old um, and now I'm 20. Um, well, yeah, was I 17? No, I think I turned 18. I was, I was 18, sorry. I started my business when I was 18 years old and now I'm 20. Um, so I was still a teenager. I was very young um, compared to a lot of other people in the business world, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So the main one, first of all, before you even start a business is to discover your passion and ideally build a, pas uh, build a business around your passion. You're gonna outshine every single form of competition. You're going to beat everyone in the market. You are going to make more money. You're going to be more happier. You're going to have much more success if you build a business based around your passion. <clears throat> when you do that, you're just gonna succeed tenfold. If, if there was two people um, that wanted to, you know, make a business based around golf. If one person is more passionate about golf than the other, the person that is passionate is going to win and make more money if that's your goal every time. And on top of that, you're gonna have more fun doing it. And even if you're not making money, you're gonna still have a great time. You're not gonna give up as soon. And the money is just going to be a byproduct of you enjoying indul um, and indulging in your passion and making a business out of it. So that's the first thing. Before you do anything, discover your passion. And the best way to do that and honestly, just, just test out a ton of different things and just sit down <clears throat> and write down things you enjoy doing and things you're interested in. Best thing you can do is just go to your YouTube or Google history and just see what you're looking up, see what you're watching, see what you're reading, see what games you're playing. The more of those you're watching, playing, reading, whatever, that's usually what your passion is. And that's usually what you're interested in. And you can usually get a pretty good kind of idea of what your passion is um, through those mediums. The other good way, is to ask your parents, your loved ones, or anyone close to you, friends, family, whoever it is, ask them the three things you're really, really good at um, and three things you're really, really bad at, and then one thing that you're the best at the world in the world at. So ask them those questions. You can kind of determine what you're good at, what you're bad at, and you can kind of be able to put the pieces together. Worst comes to worst, final scenario, just try a ton of different things and a ton of different niches, a ton of different opportunities. Uh, second is once you find your passion, once you find what you're passionate about, determine a problem within that passion of yours. So we'll stick with the golf example for this one. If uh, you like golf, you wanna find out a problem. Businesses are made out of problems, not ideas all the time. Most of the time they are made out of problems. The best businesses come from problems. If there's a problem, there's your business idea. People don't just sit in the shower and come up with an amazing business idea that makes them millions of dollars. There's usually a problem associated with it that they wanna solve themselves. So with golf, for example, say um, you're a golfer, and if you think about golf, there's a ton of different, and as with anything, there's a ton of different moving parts and pieces with golf and uh, different things involved with golf. There's the fields, there are the clubs, the equipment, the clothing, the coaches, the scoring, the media that covers it different media outlets that cover it, magazines, YouTube channels, <clears throat> TV shows, TV broadcasters, trainers, a ton of different stuff is involved in golf. And I don't know golf, so I may have just scratched the surface. Obviously, if golf's your passion, you're going to know much more. Look at each section of that and see where there are problems. Are clubs made too bad or whatever? Are people not getting the right clubs? Are people not performing correctly? Whatever it is, determine a problem within that sector but you gotta be sure to think outside of the box. You know, a lot of people will think, oh, okay, well, golf, not many fields are being filled up, so I wanna help people fill up their golf fields. Maybe, but you gotta try to think outside of the box a little bit. Take a step back, write these things down, think on them, and more importantly, ask people. Ask people what problems they experience on fields, what problems do they experience in golf, what problems do they experience with their clubs, with their coaches, where did they learn from, what was difficult in starting golf, why do they golf? talk to a ton of other people besides yourself because when you just talk to yourself you're just going to see problems that you have and other people may have them but what's more important is if you have the problem you've experienced it other people have the problem and you know how to solve that problem make sure to just think outside of the box um, third to actually get your business going this is probably what most of you guys came here for to get your business actually going and to maybe make money from it or to uh, get a get you know traction from your business 
it's super simple. There's kind of three things that I think you really need to focus on 100% of the time when you're starting your business. The first one is networking. Um, you need to network with anyone and everyone you possibly can within your passion area and even a little bit outside of it who are maybe somewhat related to that. You need to network and just build connections with a ton of people. Genuine connections, not based around money, just based around getting to know people and expanding your reach and what you, who you are and what you're about and what you're trying to achieve. Second thing is to hustle. I used to go door to door and I'll explain that in a minute, but just hustle your ass off, message a ton of people, talk to a ton of people, post content, uh, review things, try things, test things out, research, talk to people, pitch people your product, practice, just hustle. Um, finally, learning. Learning, and the, these three things will be your launch pad. Networking, hustling, and learning. Learning is gonna come with the hustle side of things and it will come with the networking as well, but learn as much as you can because when you do that, you're going to be able to just have a huge launch pad and once again, you're gonna have much more knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better. Um, so kind of tying this up into my experiences, networking, the first thing I did when I started business is I did get a mentor and you do not have to get a mentor, but this built connections with me. I remember when I started, I built connections with a ton of people on Instagram that I still talk to today. And some of them, which are my mentees and some of them are my clients. I didn't mean for it to be that way. It just, it just ended up happening um, because I built a strong foundational connection with them. Um, so I remember I would go on Instagram, talk to people. When I found my mentor, I invested a lot of money in myself and that goes within the learning range of things. And you do not have to invest in yourself, but if you really wanna get an upper leg on people, you should invest in yourself. How do, you expect, how do you expect anyone to invest in you and pay you if you aren't willing to invest in yourself or pay someone else? Very important concept that I fully believe in. But we'll get to that in a second. So networking, number one, in person, online, everywhere. Um, that even goes with the content that you create. Uh, second, hustle. I used to go door to door to every single dentist in my local town as far as I could drive to in my little car. Um, as far as I could, winter, summer, no matter what, for the first year, that's all I did. Door to door was it. I went door to door to dentists. I got into a networking group. I combined the two. I had a networking group combined with going door to door and then a few referrals started to roll in. But it was a lot of hustling. I drove around for five, six hours a day, just going door to door to dentist, to dentist, to dentist, and, and other different people that I thought I was interested in helping, but it was more of a fad. So hustling is important. Hard work does not define your success, but it definitely helps. If you're smart about it and you work hard, that's where the two come together and that's where you really are gonna make a profound impact in yourself and your business. And then finally, learning. For me, like I said, mentorships were a big one for me not courses. If you're going to invest in yourself, I really recommend you invest in a mentor, someone that you can talk to. And I'm willing to do that with you. I'm willing to talk to you about it if you want to, but it's completely up to you. But research, do your research. But at the end of the day, you need to invest in yourself and others will invest in you. You know, give yourself a, a launch pad to go off of. Network hustle. You can do that 100% for free and you can start your business and you can determine the problems because at the end of the day, what's going to make a good business is the foundation. If you have a strong foundation, you're going to be able to build that business much higher versus having a weak foundation. It'll fall over a lot easier if you have a weak foundation. So with that being said, I hope this helps you guys kind of determine what you want to achieve with your business, how to start a business if you're young and, and being young doesn't have anything to do with it. You don't need money to go out and network and hustle. I didn't, I barely used money until I invested in my first mentor. And then from there I used, I used money elsewhere. I mean, you can make a Facebook group, reach out to people on Facebook, Instagram, go door to door, network, talk to people, call people up and just go out there and hustle. Um, I mean, if, if you guys want any kind of help with this more one-on-one -on -one style, I do have a mentorship. You definitely don't have to join it, but it's ridiculously cheap. So if you're interested, just leave a comment or shoot me an Instagram DM message or Facebook, wherever you can find me, you'll be able to find my contact information uh, below. But shoot me a message. I'm glad to talk to you and get you off the ground running totally for free. Or if you want to join my more strenuous mentorship, it's ridiculously cheap. It's pocket change. And um, also get a job too while you're building your business. You don't want to be stressed on top of making a business. It's, it's just going to screw you over. So with that being said, I hope this video helps someone out there and um, get out there, start a business, make a difference. Doesn't matter how old you are because I was 18, just turned 18 when I started, not even. And uh, 
it definitely helped me a ton. So it doesn't matter. If anything, it, it helped me more. People were more like shocked that I was 18, you know. But anyway, with that being said, reach out to me, guys. I hope this video helped someone out there. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks again. See you in the next video.